Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be doing our second video for the day on AMD Ryzen Raven Ridge. In case you missed it, I posted a video showing game performance earlier this morning on the new Raven Ridge APUs from AMD. That was the Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G, which both have integrated Vega graphics right on the same package along with the CPU. And my takeaway from that video was that I was extremely impressed and I still am with these APUs and the type of performance that they can actually dish out for only $169 for the Ryzen 5 and $99 for the Ryzen 3 version of those APUs. And just how much this is going to shake up the market still remains to be seen, but I think it's going to be an excellent option for an entry level builder, especially someone that is planning to maybe upgrade to a graphics card later on down the road once prices start to stabilize. Also for HTPC builds, I think these are going to be great as well. That's certainly what I plan to do with one of these processors in the coming weeks. So I want to get an HTPC build up and running. I could really go with either one, honestly, because they both can power 4K video really well. And I just had no issues with either one of them. They've just been smooth as butter, completely flawless launch as far as I'm concerned. So very impressed with these overall. Hey guys, this is post-production Joker here. I just wanted to note something on the side-by-side -side comparison videos, which is not affecting the results at all, but I simply forgot to go into MSI Afterburner and change the name of the GPU from Vega 8 back to Vega 11 when I swapped over the APUs again. So that's why you're gonna be seeing Vega 8 on the screen written there, but that's just because it's a modified text file that you can just do to have it for your GPU or your CPU or whatever. So just something I forgot to change, doesn't affect the results at all, but you will see Vega 8 written on your screen as opposed to Vega 11, which is what we used with the Ryzen 5 2400G. But we're gonna be focusing on RAM speeds today because we've known for a while that RAM frequency speeds can have a big impact on performance with APUs, but also Ryzen CPUs just in general, mostly because of the Infinity Fabric technology which they have on that architecture. And now with having the Vega graphics, thrown in there as well. We're relying on our RAM frequency to really, you know, handle that infinity fabric and how the different parts are communicating with each other, those being the CPU, the Vega graphics, as well as the memory. So those all need to communicate and they need to communicate as fast as possible so that you are getting the full potential out of your Ryzen APU if you do happen to pick one up. Now, I'm gonna be using the same RAM that I used in the review earlier today. That's G-Skill Flarex RAM at 3200 megahertz. And I also, I tested that against it at not 3200 megahertz. So it's a Flarex RAM with CAS latency 14, very high quality RAM. I did stick with just testing on the Ryzen 5 2400G for this video, but I had it at the same overclock as I did in the previous video from this morning. And the motherboard is the same as well, the Asus X370 Pro. And I am using a liquid cooler here. It's the Corsair H60. So a decent sort of bud budget to mid-range all-in-one liquid cooler, just a single fan design, nothing really too crazy about it. Uh, we also did have our RAM. I did increase the video memory allocation on the memory to make it up to two gigabytes. So you, by default, the motherboards will, will put them to one gigabyte, but you can actually go in there and you can tweak it and get it up to two gigabytes if you go ahead and do that. And though, although doing that, honestly, the performance difference is negligible. I only saw a change of about one to two FPS really at the most by putting that on, but your mileage may vary if you do happen to play some more memory intensive games. But I do think that is all of the pertinent information that you guys need to know. As far as testing methodology, it was pretty simple. I pretty much loaded up the system at the default XMP profile or on Asus motherboards, it's DOCP. I don't know why they see the need to change that, but it's basically just XMP. So the XMP profile for my RAM was 3200 megahertz. And then I also disabled XMP and I ran it at its stock out of the box speed, which is 2400 megahertz. So we're looking at an 800 megahertz difference here going between the two different versions of testing here. And it definitely matters. Like as you'll be seeing on your screen right here in the side-by-side -side comparison, it mattered in all of the titles that I tested here, which were all games that I used in the previous testing as well. Uh, all the games were tested at 1080p on the lowest settings available in those games. So in the case of like GTA 5, I was using the normal settings, which is just the lowest that the options could go in that. And on the 2400G, honestly with the RAM, 
overclocked to 3200 megahertz or not, the game still ran very well. But in some other titles, maybe something like Battlefield 1, it could be the difference between getting a smooth 60 frames per second or not. Because the difference I was seeing between overclocked RAM versus non-overclocked RAM was around 10 FPS. It was almost 10 FPS exactly across the board with maybe a variance of one to two frames here or there. But yeah, we have a sample size here of five games, so we'll go ahead and throw up the graph right now of the games that I did test on the 2400G with the different frequency speeds. So you can see here Battlefield 1 getting 62 average FPS at 3200 megahertz versus 53 at 2400 megahertz. GTA 5 ran incredibly well no matter what, but there is a 10 FPS difference there going from 94 to 84 FPS. Overwatch, again, ran very well here on this APU, which is only $169. I mean, look at that, getting 103 FPS on the, high, the higher frequency versus 89 FPS. And you could definitely crank up some options in that game to medium. You're not going to be stuck playing it just low because you could see I'm over 100 FPS here with the overclocked RAM. So you've got some headroom there to be able to tweak some options and adjust them accordingly. I just didn't want to go out and just, you know, blanketly test these all these games at Ultra and, be like, call, and call it a day. I think it would be absurd to test APUs at Ultra unless the games can actually handle the, them and you're playing maybe older titles, then you could probably play something at Ultra like Half-Life 2. I'm sure you could run that maxed out, no problem. But it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to test something like GTA 5 or Battlefield 1 or Rainbow Six Siege on Ultra settings. So that's why I didn't do it. Uh, we also got Rainbow Six Siege in here, easily my favorite game right now to play on the PC. Got an average of 83 FPS and 72 FPS respectively for the different frequency speeds. And Rise of the Tomb Raider was our most taxing game that we played here, just like in the previous testing. Ended up getting an average of 43 FPS and 37 FPS, depending on frequency speed. Uh, we'll go ahead and switch over to our 1% lows now, which is kind of like the minimums, although I prefer to use 1% lows because it's just a bit more reliable. Minimum FPS really can rely on outliers as you can just get a single frame drop and it could shoot right back up. And that really isn't representative of the actual game experience, whereas 1% lows takes the average 1% low of frame times and then converts that into frames per second. So it's a much more reliable method of testing. I saw some people talking about it on the previous video as where the minimum FPS, well, just Think of the 1% low as the new, better form of minimum FPS testing. And as you can see here, it's about what you would expect, uh, you know, 1% lows being or minimum, quote unquote, minimum FPS being, you know, coming from an APU or a GPU, what have you. And yeah, all the games though, running really well, still here on the APU. Um, obviously, if you can get 3200 megahertz RAM, then that would be the ideal situation or maybe 3000 megahertz. Because what it comes down to is the faster RAM you can get, the better the APU is going to perform in games. I would say if you are planning to pick up a graphics card maybe in a month or so, then maybe it's not going to be as big of an issue for you as it's kind of a temporary solution. Although, in my experience, even right now with the RAM prices being very high, just like graphics card prices, usually once you get to a certain memory amount, so whether you're getting 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes, if you decide to get 16 gigabytes, the difference in price between the different frequencies isn't really that great where it's worth to kind of skimp out on it. If you can get 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's probably worth just getting 3000 megahertz RAM, something like Corsair Vengeance LPX or the G-Skill 3200 megahertz RAM kit that I was testing here, as I can definitely vouch for its compatibility on AMD Ryzen. It's probably the reason AMD sent the same RAM out to every review out, reviewer out there is because they know that this particular RAM kit is reliable. So if you're looking for a RAM kit to use with the APUs, I would say that's probably a good route of going, although I've had good luck in the past as well with the Corsair Vengeance LPX, and I've used it in multiple Ryzen systems. So either which way you go, I, just really to put this question, this question to rest is, yes, RAM speed matters on these APUs. Like, as you saw in the graphs, we're looking at about 10 FPS difference pretty much across the board. So that could be a huge amount, especially if you are playing a game and if you get slower RAM, you might be sitting around 50 FPS, whereas going out and getting the faster RAM could be the difference of you getting 60 FPS or 50. And it's going to be up to you, you know, how much that's going to affect you or not. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on today's testing. And if there's anything else you would like to see on Raven Ridge in the coming days or weeks that we can possibly test here 
on the channel. As I mentioned, I'm going to be doing an HTPC build using Raven Ridge, so that'll be coming up probably in the next week or two. I'm just kind of waiting on some final parts here from Corsair, but once I have those in, we will definitely get into using that. We'll probably do some more testing based on like HTPC used like with Plex, maybe some Kodi and things like that, 4K playback, and we'll just kind of talk all about that in the HTPC video. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here because this is the second video I did today and it's actually the second time I had to record this video because my mic messed up on the first one. So I'm pretty much done recording for the day. I'm going to go edit this and throw it up on the channel. Well, by, by then you'll, you'll, you'll be watching it. I mean, if you got to this point, you've, you've clearly watched it. So you, you're like watching from the future, man. You're from the future. But as I said, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget to leave a like on the video down below if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you have been here for a while, you can always hit that notification bell so you never miss a moment of content here on the channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Sarah.